Hi there, I'm Rhonda and I help makers turn their digital designs into income. On my channel, you'll get quick tutorials, cool tools, and simple strategies to grow your digital product business. If you want daily AI prompts, trend tips, and a fun community that gets it, join us in our AI Profit Society. I left a link in the description. Don't forget to like and subscribe so you don't miss a thing. And now without any further delay, let's get into today's video. Hey guys, it's Rhonda and we are inside of the new Affinity Studio again today. I've been having a lot of questions about um, whether or not you can use PSD smart object mockups here in Affinity. You know, we've been talking about uh, is Affinity Studio the program that's finally going to let us cut the cord with Adobe and their high subscription fees for things like Photoshop and Illustrator. Um, but you know, cutting the cord with Adobe also means, you know, what are you going to do with all your mockups that you already have? You know, I have a complete uh, PSD smart object mockup vault that has, you know, over 60 different mockups for uh, people to use for their digital products. And, you know, that's a lot to just throw away. So, I have been playing around and I have found that we can still use the majority of our Photoshop mockups right here in Affinity. Okay, and I am going to show you a couple of them right now. I'm just going to show you how I do it. So I have this mockup right here. This is out of our PSD mockup vault, the ceramic coffee mug, and I'm just going to drag it over. And you can see here on the right in our layers panel, we have our background and then we have our uh, image placeholder, which in Photoshop would be our smart object. In Affinity, if you hover over this little tab here on the left, it's called an embedded document. So it's pretty much the same thing. It just has different names. Now, to use this in Affinity, and see if we hover over this in the center. Now, where did that go? So you can see where it's set up, just like it would be in Photoshop. But anyway, if you come back over here to the layer panel and you double click on the image placeholder, it will bring up the smart object or embedded document window, just like it would in Photoshop. And you can see right here at the top, it even says embedded. So what we can do is just drag. Well, we don't want that one because that is not what I thought it was going to be. Let's get rid of that layer. Okay. There we go. Let's look in here. Let's find what we're looking for. All right, let's find something else. <laughs> Sorry about that. I thought I had a design ready to go, but I didn't, I didn't. All right, so I'm just gonna grab a design over here, um, drag it in, drop it. Now, these designs were created at 5,000 by 5,000 pixels, so they could be used for like T-shirts and anything you wanted to. So I'm dropping it in and I had to resize it a little bit, but there it is. And I'm just going to hit control S to save that and look over here. And there it is on our mug. So it works just the same way it does in Photoshop. No problems at all. Now you would just save this as a JPEG or PNG, upload it to your Etsy store, and there's your mock-up, okay? And then we could just delete that layer, save it so your image is blank, so you can use it over and over and over again. But let's bring in one more design just to, let's do this one. And again, you know, these are large images. Uh, to make sure, you know, they can be used for a variety of products. It's not limited. 
if I was designing just for coffee mugs, these would fit in here, you know, pretty well. So control S to save. And there we go. There's our Howdy Christmas coffee mug. So again, that's, it works just the same way as it does in Photoshop. No problem at all for 90% of your mockups. Occasionally you might get one that wants to act up. Um, for that, I would suggest just using Photopea instead if you, uh... so I'm gonna do another one here. This is a four layer mockup, okay? This is a mockup I created for uh, laser engraved design. So let's drop this in. And this is taking a while to load up because there we go. And when it does come in, it's going to tell you there is an unknown property effect gradient fill because I had these, each one of these layers has some effects on it to uh, mimic these designs being engraved into the wood. All right, but it doesn't affect anything. Don't worry about it if you would pull this into Affinity and you get that warning. It's no big deal. So this has four different design layers, okay? And again, they all showed up just like they were supposed to. Lower right, lower left, top left, top right. And we'll do it just the same way we did it for the coffee mug. I'm gonna double click on lower right image there it is and i am going to grab some svg designs to throw on here um, so let's go with let's bring this one over and let's turn off that placeholder image we don't need that let's put our alligator or dinosaur whatever he is let's put him right there in the center control s and there it is on the coaster and let's zoom in a little so you can see that all right so that looks good and now we just move on to the next one lower left same thing double click turn off that placeholder and let's drag something else in, another design, and just size it to fit however big you want it. Let's put that right there, Control S, and there's that one on its coaster. And you would just repeat the process for all four coasters. Let's drag in this. There's another dinosaur. Center it. Control S. There's that one. And finally, the last one. Turn that off. And let's drag in one more. There's our mama bear. Control S, and there's your mock-up for, you know, laser engraved coasters with four different images on them. So again, this worked just the same way it would in Photoshop. And I'm going to delete those layers with our images on them and save it so that I can, you know, use this over and over. And there is our blank mock-up. So again, this is working just the same way it does in Photoshop. I am going to bring one in, though, that doesn't work in here, just so you can see. Let's go find one. Here we go. It is... I believe this one let's drag this in and this shows you know a tumbler so here is our 
uh, image placeholder. We're going to double click on that. We're going to bring in a Tumblr wrap. And let's zoom out. Okay, control S. And you see that this one just does not work. It could be something I'm doing. It could be something in the smart object layers. And that's the problem. You know, they won't all work in Affinity. It's going to completely depend on how the mock-up was put together and things like that. All right. So I just wanted to show you an example of one that doesn't work. But again, for that, if you are, you know, wanting to cut the cord from Adobe, don't think that just because a few mockups won't work in Affinity that you have to keep Adobe. We have uh, Photo P right here. Let's close this. And let's drag. Here's that same mockup that we just had open in Affinity. We'll double click our image. We're going to drag in the same design. And there it works just fine here. Uh, and Photo P is again 100% free and it works almost identically to Photoshop. So if you are wanting to cut that Adobe cord and are worried about having a few mockups that aren't going to work in Affinity, don't worry. You can always use them in uh, Photo P here. All right. So I hope you guys uh, found this helpful. If you have any other questions, let me know. I am going to start working on affinity specific mockups as well. I'll keep doing the Photoshop mockups, but I will start working on ones that are specifically made for affinity and they'll be going into our mockup vault as well. So again, I hope this was helpful. Questions, drop them in the comments or join us in the community. And I will see you guys in the next video.